Yeah, I mean, it was it was obviously a very tough match. Um, you know, me- mentally, the last three, four days have been pretty tiring. Uh, you know, when the conditions have been like they, they have been, um, you need to focus so hard, um, you know, on almost every shot because, you know, the ball is very hard to control. So mentally, it was... It was challenging, you know, aside from it being, you know, a, a slam final and, you know, having not won one before, playing against Novak, who, you know, on this surface is, I mean, in the slams, he, I don't think he's lost for, you know, f- you know, a couple of years, so it was an incredibly <coughs> tough match, um, and yeah, it obviously felt, felt great at the end, I mean, relief is probably the, the best word I, I would use to you know, describe how, how I'm feeling just now, and um, yeah, very very happy that, that I managed to, to come through. Because if I'd lost this one from two sets up, that would have been that would have been a tough one to take. Cindy, can, can you just put into words? You just said relief. Is there a moment where you thought <coughs> exultation too? Well, I, I don't know what that I'm means. Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Andy. Um, it's thrill. It's that you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, there's you're feeling a lot of things, you know. You don't, you know, like I was obviously very emotional. I, you know, I cried, you know, a little bit on the court. You know, you're not sad. You, you know, you're incredibly happy. You know, as you know, you're in a little bit of disbelief because, you know, when I've been in that position many times before and not one, you do think, you know, is it ever going to happen? Um, <coughs> You know, and then when when it finally does, you're just yeah, you're obviously very, <laughs> very excited, but yeah, mainly mainly relieved to have, have, have got over that that last hurdle. Andy, for 76 years, through players, you've around the neck being compared to the guy whose kid you used to wear. <coughs> what does it feel like to have finally done it? Yeah, I mean that's that's I mean. You, when you're on the court, you don't necessarily feel it. But I know when I was serving for the match, there's, you know, there's a sense of how, you know, how big, uh, you know, a moment that is in British tennis history, really. So, you know, that adds, that obviously adds to it. And, you know, I know more than, more than most, you know, British players. I've been asked about it many times when I've got, you know close to winning Grand Slams before I get asked about it more and more um, you know even after I won the Olympics it was still you know still got asked you know when when are you going to win a Grand Slam so yeah it's it's great to have finally done it and you know I was say, I said in one of the interviews after the match I hope now you know if it inspires some some kids to, to play tennis and also takes away the notion that British tennis players choke or you know don't win or you know it's not a good sport you know it's it's in a very good place in the UK right now obviously Laura's done very well the Olympics was was great for us and you know Liam Brody was in the final here in the, in the juniors and it's in a good place so I hope it hope it stays that way. Actually, I felt fine. Um, I felt fine after I got that break to to serve for a five two. I mean, I was still obviously very nervous around sort of three two four two. Um, you still, you know, you're still a long way from the finish line, and we you know when the conditions are like that, really anything can happen. But you know, I got myself up after a minute or so of sitting down and just went to the back of the court and thought, you know, where are you going to serve first point and you know, once I got that first point, I set, I, I settled down and felt felt fine. I've served matches out very well my whole career. I've never really had a problem with it. Um, and yeah, today it was the same. Yeah. How, how tough was it um, at the start of the set when, when you come back? Did, did the other finals go through your mind at all? Or did you not allow yourself to think about it? Uh, no, I wasn't thinking about the other finals. I was thinking a bit more about know what happened the last couple of sets and the situation I kind of found myself in after you know I guess it was nearly four hours of play by that by that stage and you know I, I went to the, the the toilet after the the fourth set and just you know had a think and 
you know, said it's just one one more set. Give everything. You don't want to come off this court with any regrets, and don't let get, don't get too down on yourself. Just just try and fight. And I got a bit fortunate to to get the break at the beginning of the the set, and that helped. Um, I got a net court on on the slice backhand, and um, and then I settled down a bit after that. Andy, I'm sure you're going to be asked this question a lot, but I mean, can you try and give us a sense of how different this was uh, to winning the gold medal? <coughs> In the Olympics, I mean, one a huge victory for your country, the other a huge victory for you personally, a vindication. I mean, how do you compare and contrast them a bit? Yeah, it's definitely different. Um, <coughs> you know, at the Olympics, there was there was so much going on. Uh, you know, with all of the other sports, and you know, everyone was doing really well, and there was you know a lot of momentum and and stuff, and you know, I had also the mixed doubles to focus on a bit and when when you know you're guaranteed you know a couple of silver medals that's that also maybe helped me a little bit uh going into the the final there whereas here um you know still doubting myself right up to a few minutes before you go on to to play the match you're thinking you know are you going to be able to do this this is going to it's going to be tough the match against him is it always is going to hurt as well you know physically it's challenging um and yeah it's something I, i've never done before I, i've been in this position many times and not managed to to get through so there's a lot of things you're thinking about before you go out on the court and um i'm just so so relieved like i said to, to finally got through and can put this one behind me and hopefully hopefully one more. Right, Willie. Andy, what are your thoughts now on just how difficult the personal road has been for you to get to this first Grand Slam championship? Uh, it's been, I mean, it's been tough um, because I've, you know, I've lost a lot of tight matches and semi-finals and, you know, lost comfortably in my first few Slam finals as well. Um, I mean, this obviously not everyone in here sees all the stuff that goes on away from the court in terms of you know the training that you do and you know the I guess the physical sort of stuff or the, the, the you know the stuff you put your body through really on a on a weekly basis to try and prepare for these moments so you can play for four and a half hours at you know a high intensity um, and that's what's that's what's tough. I mean, my life is still. <laughs> Very, very good. Still very fortunate to be able to do this for for a living. Um, but you know, when you get so close to achieving your really my last goal I had left to achieve in in tennis and winning a Grand Slam, and when you you've been there many times and not done it, it is easy to doubt yourself. And you know, I'm just like I say, glad I managed to finally do it, and happy that you know I was able to do it for all the guys I work with as well, because they've been been with me pretty much from the start. Um, and seen all of those those things that go on, you know, away from the court. Scott, Andy, how old were you when you first felt that weight? Of, you know, are you going to be the first man who's going to break this thing? And secondly, in the fourth second when it was slipping away a bit, you had the two sets of, you know, love lead. Did you get scared and think, oh my God, I'm going to, you know, this is going to slip away? Uh, I don't feel scared, but it's something that you do. Like I said, at the end of the fourth set, you are thinking, you know, what's what's gone on here the last couple of sets, and you know, what can I do um, to try and change it? And obviously, when you're playing against someone like Novak, who, you know, he has come back in a lot of matches, especially here, uh, you know, and he is in, in very good shape. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to match him right up until the the end. So, yeah, even during the match, you're still questioning yourself a bit and you're still doubting yourself a little bit and I just you know, I just managed to, to stay tough enough today and then get through. And, and again, how old were you when you first that week? Uh, I mean, I don't know ex <coughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, probably when when I lost in the, the Aussie Open final, the maybe the first time really um, you know, I was starting to feel like, you know, something that kind of everyone was maybe expecting um, to happen, but I knew deep down how tough it was to, to do it because of the 
people you were competing against. So, you know, I started to to question whether I was going to be able to do it. Um, you know, around around that age, but I always worked hard and tried to do all the right things, and <laughs> glad it, it finally happened. Okay. Bill? Andy, you've obviously had this fabulous tournament, this fabulous summer, but looking back on, on the process you just talked about, you may have shared this before, but one with, what was the toughest stretch, the toughest moment, or when you had the most help? Um, <clears throat> after I lost to Novak in Australia last last year, I wasn't I wasn't feeling good at all for well, pretty much into the clay court season. So that was a good three month stretch, really three four month stretch where I really struggled with my game. I struggled, you know, for motivation. I lost, and I think I lost in the first round of Indian Wells and Miami. Um, you know, and really wasn't wasn't playing well, wasn't enjoying enjoying it so much and you know, stopped working with Alex Karecha around that time as well and that was also hard. Um, I mean that was since I come on the tour that was probably the, the hardest uh, the hardest part. Uh, Andy, having uh, four different winners this year in the blend, uh, and having you won the Olympics and being in the final of the do you consider yourself uh, the, the most successful player of the year until now, more or less. And another question, you, I remember you didn't like to play in wind. You told us many, many times. But did you attend in the meanwhile a navigation college in Southampton to improve your aptitude to uh, No, I, I didn't. <coughs> um, I, I, I don't think I've had uh, the best year on the tour. No, I think the last few months have been have been great for me. But you know, there is more to the tennis tour than just the Grand Slams. And you know, Novak has played great tennis, and most of the the Masters series as well. Roger has got himself back to number one. Um, you know, and I think. It, it is important to remember that the tennis season, you know, starts in January, finishes in November. There's four slams, but there's also many other tournaments that to get to number one in the world. Which I think, if you're number one, you deserve to be the player of the year. You can't just rely on only playing the Grand Slams. You need to do well at the other events as well. And I haven't done as well as I've I've needed to to get to to number one in the world. So I would say Novak or or Roger would be the the, the best players this year, but there's still a few months left. Justin. And no, I didn't do the Southampton thing. Yeah, it's it, it is hard to to describe because I, I'm probably th I'm thinking a lot just now. Uh, I'm thinking a lot <laughs> about a lot of different uh, different things. Um, you know, I've, yeah, I mean, I've obviously just seen the the guys that I work with. I saw my my girlfriend, my mum. You know, all those people, and I think I think everyone's just in a little bit of shock, to be honest. That it's you know it's kind of happened. I mean, I've seen my mum after I've lost and slam finals and stuff and she's been really upset and everyone seem everyone's really really happy but every this like be a good time to show it. yeah <laughs> exactly um uh, i think we're kind of sort of learning from lendo a little bit yeah he uh yeah he doesn't doesn't smile a whole lot but um <laughs> Yeah, it's it is it is hard to explain. It's been it's been a long a long journey to this point. So I'm just I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's disbelief or whatever. I'm very very happy on the the inside. I'm sorry <laughs> if I'm not not showing it as <laughs> as you would like. <laughs> not to break up the tower topic, although it isn't anymore. I don't think. So just back to 1936 for a minute. I, I've been in this room many many times. I've heard the topic the draft brought up with Tim Henman many times, with you many many times. It's it's 
topic I'm sure that you've had to endure. Your profession comes with it, a ton of pressure as it is. How much more pressure has it been, being that the, the hopes of <coughs> have been upon you, to, and you know, this was that way it's been before and others. Just talk about that and also how great a relief is it to, to finally have, have a shift out. Yeah, I think the... <coughs> I mean, I, I get asked about, well, I did get asked about that all of the time for the last few years. Most uh, most press conferences I would do, I would get asked, you know, a question along those sort of lines, and it do, it does build it does build pressure a little bit. You try not to um, you try not to think about it much when you're playing. But like I said, when I was serving for the match, it's something that you realize, you know, I realized how important that moment was and you know, for British tennis or British sport, you know, it's something that hasn't happened for a long time, um, obviously, in, in our country. And, yeah, I'm, I'm obviously proud that I managed to, you know, to, to achieve it. And, yeah, I don't have to get asked that, that stupid question again. <laughs> 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 As a follow-up question, did the Olympic victory help? I know it's not it's just as a grandstand thing, but did it Yeah, I think after even after after Wimbledon this year, I did feel I felt much better after losing that match than I had after the other slams, and the support I had afterwards was something that I hadn't really experienced before, and that that also helped me to get over it quickly. The Olympics um, was yeah, I mean it was obviously huge for me. It was the biggest week of of my life um, for sure. Um, and but uh, it's still today when you know before the match and you're sitting in the locker room beforehand, like I say, there's still doubts. You know, you're still thinking. You know, you know, if I lose this one, that's you know, no one's ever lost their first five finals, and you know, you don't. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you, you know, and I just I don't <laughs> really want to be that person. So it was good, good to win. Uh, well, going into the the Olympic final, I felt different to how I did going into the Wimbledon final. Um, I think I dealt with both situations fairly well. I uh, wasn't too too nervous, but like I say, today I was I was very nervous. 